Hey everybody, this is GGV Calls Puppers, and as you can see by the title on the shirt, it's time for College Basketball Upset of the Day. So let's get straight into it. As you know, there were no basketball games on Thursday, so I didn't do a game for Thursday, a video for Thursday. So this is going to recap Friday's games, uh, and then we're going to do our Saturday predictions in which four ranked teams, uh, there are four ranked teams that are playing, or actually five ranked teams that are playing, and we'll go over all that soon. So, number nine, Wisconsin was taking on number 12, Michigan State, at Michigan State Stadium. The last 12 Big Ten times they've visited, the last 12 times they visited uh, Michigan State, it resulted in losses for Wisconsin. Wisconsin broke that streak today, although they tried to give it away at the end with all those missed free throws. Uh, they did end up be coming out on top. They ended up beating Michigan State. Props to them. But very disappointing for me, who desperately needed a win, sitting at one and a half. I've got to get a win uh, either Saturday or Sunday, and then hope there's no upsets. God, I'm so scared. <laughs> okay, uh, 5 o'clock, uh, Michigan did what we all expected Michigan to do to Nebraska. Michigan now has taken the lead in the Big Ten. They are now leading the conference, and that's really impressive in my opinion. <sighs> Number four, Iowa took it on Minnesota, and this is the thing. I would have been fine with half a point. Half a point gets me to two. Then, if I no upsets happen in the next two days, I'm in. I, I don't have to do the print. I don't have to do the dare. But Minnesota upset Iowa in overtime, and oh no, Jim. Which means I gotta get Saturday's game right because I am not confident at all on Sunday's game, uh, which you guys you'll see the episode. But I don't know if enough people watch this series, so maybe I won't have to do a dare. Cross my fingers and hope to die. Uh, but let's go over the Saturday games. There are four. Tw one at 12 o'clock. This is one of my favorite games right now. You have number six Houston traveling to UCF. Now, it doesn't seem like a huge game, but UCF and Houston so far look like the cream of the crop of the American. UCF has played phenomenally well. They have that win at Florida State, and that is not... like uh, uh, a, a, a miracle, basically. UCF has been playing well all year, sitting at two and one, and this is ah, I'm gonna say, it. this is gonna probably these games. Whenever Houston plays UCF, I think those are games are gonna help determine who's the American championship, American champion. I think SMU is gonna be in the mix. Not gonna diss SMU. I'm, SMU also has a very good squad built together this year, but I think Houston and UCF are probably the cream of the crop right now. If SMU does something to prove themselves i'll put them up there too i do think smu can play their well th themselves into a march madness spot without winning the entire tournament uh, american tournament uh but ucf's been playing at a very high level right now and this is a huge one last time houston the last two times houston has visited us ucf they beat them okay this is a chance for ucf to set a tone they didn't they weren't going to make the postseason last year unless they went on an american uh, run, but they, as many of you know, they went against Duke two years ago and almost won. So I think UCF's coming together as a program. Very good coach from the Coach K tree. Uh, I'm really excited to see how this game goes. UCF has a serious chance of pulling off this upset here. Then we have number 22, Ohio State at Northwestern. Now, Northwestern has proven themselves as another contender in the Big Ten. Did you know that... <laughs> Of the 14 Big 12 team, Big 10 teams, 12 of them have a winning record. And it's not just a winning record. It's like 5-3 and three is the lowest of those winning records. Like, you have, obviously, Michigan, Michigan State, Northwestern, Nebraska, uh, Ohio State, Rutgers, <laughs> Indiana, Maryland, Purdue. All these teams are, like, really good this year. And I think it's possible that we get 12 teams in the Big Ten from the Big Ten in the tournament. Because if you look at the SEC... You look at the Pac-12. Yeah, from the SEC, you might be maybe get three. I think you might get three. I think you might get. I think you could make a case for Tennessee. Obviously, I think they should get in. I think Missouri is a pretty good team this year, although they did almost lose to Bradley. And then you almost you have uh, Arkansas can definitely make a case. I could see a fourth team maybe getting in with Florida. I think you take one team from the Pac-12 because it's just absolutely atrocious. There's no way you deserve more than one over there. ACC deserves some. Again, the Big 12 deserves some. I think at least five, maybe six or seven. Uh, and then you have teams like uh, from the Big East. So I don't know how that math works out, but I think 
12 teams deserve a shot. And I, I still wonder how Penn State pulls it together. I watched them against Illinois. They scored a lot of points, so they have the talent offensively. Can they get the defensive side going? The big thing is they don't have a great center, a big, great big man. I wonder if that's going to be figured out as the year goes along because that's what happened. With, that's what killed Penn State is they let, kept letting offensive rebounds go. Uh, but it might just be that Illinois' big is probably the second best big in the Big Ten behind Luca Garza. But Ohio State pulled off a huge upset, in my opinion, against Rutgers. They pulled off a great game. I'm very impressed. Northwestern lost 71-59 last time they met. But Northwestern's looking really good right now, looking like a really good basketball team. I'm excited to see how this happens. Ohio State's favorite by three in this one. It's on FS1 at 1 o'clock if you wanted to watch it. 3 o'clock, Indiana, which is sitting at 5-2, and two, at number 18, Illinois, which is 5-3, and three, right? Uh, Illinois just came off a huge win against Penn State, a huge win that if they had lost would have slipped into 4-4. Four and four. Instead, they're sitting at 5-3, and three, a very, very good record. Very good record. The last time they played, Illinois won 67-66. to 66. So again, these games are normally extremely close. Uh, Indiana just lost a heartbreaker this week against Northwestern, which is really sad for that program. They definitely needed that win. Uh, it would have been nice to get the, the win against Northwestern, but they have a chance to prove themselves against the top 25 opponent here this week against Illinois. Illinois is a pretty good team, although slipping to 5-4 and four would be really, really hurt them. Possibly push them out of playoff, uh, not playoff contention, but like it would really hurt their record in the Big Ten. It, they can't take a five and four hit this early on in the season, uh, so this is going to be a huge game for both teams. A five and three record for Indiana would not be good too, putting them along with the likes of Purdue and Maryland. Again, teams in my opinion right now are sitting on the fringe of the playoff. Again, we're very far away from the playoff happening in March. Obviously, uh, we still have January, February left of basketball, so. Don't worry, it's it, these things aren't decided yet. But Maryland and Purdue are they're close, so Indiana does not want to slip into those uh, the, that territory. For number sixteen Virginia and number one Gonzaga. I made my theory on Virginia very clear. I think they're in the top twenty five mainly because they're Virginia. They're three and one do not have a good win on their resume. Have some games that really really should have lost look at the kent state game they should have lost that if they had played against michigan state i find it likely they would have lost there it's i don't think virginia is that good this year i don't think i think they're an overrated squad gonzaga in my opinion it might win the championship I, i'd like to see a gonzaga baylor game to make up my mind uh but gonzaga and baylor are both playing at such a high level i think that's going to probably be the championship game they're both really good at basketball this year so drum roll please I'm going to pick Northwestern and Ohio State. Ohio State's favorite by three points. And I was debating going against Indiana. I was going to pick Indiana against number 18, Illinois, because it definitely seems like whoever more needs the win to stay in the race kind of happens that they win the game. You look at uh, yesterday, Minnesota beat Iowa to desperately stay in the race. You had... Uh, there were other other wins that there were teams that needed to stay in the race. For instance, Purdue definitely needed a win to stay in the race against Maryland today, and they got it. Definitely seems the team that needs it more in the Big Ten. That's normally how it works. Is the team that gets the win. Uh, but it definitely seems like Iowa slipping to five and four would be much more catastrophic than Indiana slipping to five and three. So definitely, I was gonna go against them, but then I realized their records, and I think Illinois needs this win more than Indiana does, which is why I think. They won't be upset. Uh, Ohio State, on the other hand, uh, doesn't really need this win. I think Northwest. I don't think. So this is a game where I don't think either team desperately needs the win. But if Northwestern wants to be ranked, they kind of have to win this one. Uh, Ohio State, I think, is going to be ranked regardless, especially with their upset win over Rutgers a few days back. That really crushed me because if they hadn't had done that, then I would have gotten half a point. But uh, unfortunately for me. Minnesota and Ohio State just absolutely crushed my dreams this week. Of, But I'm, I'm going to hope that North, I think Northwestern can pull off this upset. I'm going to pick Northwestern and hope and pray with me, guys. Hey, everybody, this is GGV. Carlos Puffer saying adios, amigos, and go Wildcats.